Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you get the most for your Jeep. I showed you a few episodes ago how you could save some money by building your own metal shelf brackets for your cargo area. And this bracket is strong enough that it supported my own weight on this very shelf. Now in this episode, I'm really excited to share with you a modification to the bracket which enables you to have an attic shelf. Stick around. If you're already thinking that this item might be of interest to you, you may want to go see the original video where I review the cost of materials, the types of fasteners, the tools that you'll need, and more detailed instructions. The link to the video will be in the description section below. So this is how the bracket is structured right now. It's using the existing holes in the roll bar here to secure it to the Jeep. And I've got an angle iron right here that's about 18 inches. I used 18 inches because it was exactly half of one piece of the angle iron. But if you wanted to make it a different size, you could. And then in the other video, I showed what the measurements are of these pieces. Now the theory is here, if I were to extend this piece to about 15 inches, I could connect another angle iron to it up here and just have an additional piece right here that I could detach from the piece of angle iron and swing down. Well, that's the theory. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is take the angle iron, which is 36 inches, and then cut it in half at 18 inches. So technically, I could connect the angle iron right to that bolt and have the second shelf at this level and make it so it swings down like this. And that'd be okay, except I don't want this shelf to be this shallow. And I also don't want things on the second shelf to block my view out the rear window. But I still want to have enough shelving space. So I'm thinking somewhere around this height would be good because then the roll bar, the crossbar piece here, will prevent things from sliding forward and the top will hold things in at this end. So when I measure this, I would imagine that a 15 inch piece ought to do the trick, but I'm gonna make it a little longer so I can make it adjustable. So I have to cut it 15 inches or greater. So this piece here will come up this way and I'll have a couple holes here so that this can swing from the different holes depending on what I want. So each of these flat bars is 36 inches so I'm going to cut it in half at 18 inches. Next thing we have to do is start drilling some holes for our 5 16 bolts. So you can see now this piece will go here where that bolt is and then the shelf can go either here, here or here. And I realize I still have to drill this hole so I'm going to remove this piece and transcribe the exact location of the hole in this piece onto this piece so it'll fit perfectly. So now I just gotta remove this piece. So these are half inch heads that I'm gonna now remove this piece. I also use a spacer in there. Spacer as well. I use the bolt as a spacer. And now this is the piece I'm going to transpose the location of the hole right here. So now I've transposed that hole here and now it's time to attach it. I had a washer spacer here. 
put the bolt spacer in and the two inch bolt. So now that I've got this bar in place and I've got these holes, I can see how high the second shelf can be. I'm happy with this location here because it's not going to block the view out of my rear view mirror and I have a number of inches of height up here. And the shelf can swing down like this for me to access whatever I want. And if I wanted it higher, I've got a spot there. If I wanted it higher, I have a spot there. Mind you, if I have it up there and it swings, it might hit the roof so I may have to shorten that length. And somebody may want it that high because they have certain things of a certain height they want to keep on this shelf and they may just want to have tarps stored up there or blankets or something or towels but uh, for my purposes I think I'm gonna move it to here in which case it'll swing down unencumbered no problem and then all I need to do is to make the piece that goes up here so for the the piece that goes here I'm going to drill a hole and just simply attach it here and then I'm going to place this here level and I'm going to mark where the hole would be for that level and I'll do the same for here and I'll do the same for here that way when it, whichever hole I use the shelf will be level and it's on this point here that I'll use e either uh, a clevis pin or a wing nut so that I can easily detach it and swing this down. So in using that hole I just hit the trim. So it looks like I'm gonna have to cut right about an inch off of the end so that I could use that hole because I like that level. I'm gonna probably use that level. So back to the saw and I'm just gonna cut down through the middle of this hole. Okay, so I cut a little bit off the end. I'm just gonna go to this third hole right here. Put the bolt through. Put the bolt through on this end. Put the nylock nut on the end. I'll give that a little more tightness later. But here you go, see how it works. So it looks like I've got about seven inches of height. I could lower it a bit. I could raise it a bit depending on my needs. What I like about this height is I still have the crossbar holding anything from flying forward. And at any point in time, I can change these heights, but I'll work with this for now. So now I'm gonna put this piece here. Now this piece I'm gonna make tight so that it stays vertical. And it's this piece that will adjust with the different adjustments up here. So when I wanna lower this, I'm gonna undo a wing nut and let this swing down like that. And this will be tight so it will stay vertical. But for now, what I need to do is determine where to drill the holes for each of those levels. But for now, I'm gonna stick with this one. I just wanna make sure that I have it level. So I'm gonna use my handy dandy iPhone level. I'll show you what I mean. Now, if you have your Jeep on level terrain you could put your phone and corresponding level app to help make sure that you get this level but my jeep isn't level so i know that i'm happy with this level when i install this so i just measure the distance i've got from here to here it's about 14 inches Okay, so that makes this level. So I just scratch a mark into the steel here and go put a hole there. So now I'm just going to attach this by putting this bolt through here, and then the piece of metal there, and the half inch head of the nylock nut in behind. Right. Now that one's going to be tight because I want this always to remain because it's this piece that's going to just swing down when I want to lower the shelf. Now, interestingly, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you, but 
on this bolt there's a shoulder and the reason why I want that there is because whenever I loosen the wing nut on the other side I don't want to have to have a tool to hold this bolt so basically we go up here bolts can go there would have been better for fitting that hole but this works for me because now I could just loosen the wing nut now I'm using this because I want it to be tight but technically you could use a clevis pin or whatever kind of quick disconnect mechanism because it's this part of the shelf that you're going to end up detaching when you want to swing it down so I'll have to tighten that so there I have the second shelf which will be braced by shelving connecting to the bracket on the other side and when I want to lower the shelf I just undo the wing nut on this side I chose wing nut but you could use clevis pin or whatever method you want and it'll and then the shelf will just swing down like that so that's it I'll just have to make the brackets for the other side and attach them as well because it's easy enough to disassemble this I'm going to now trace the whole locations on these two pieces of metal on my new piece and we'll assemble both sides now so the angle iron is 36 inches cut in half and then I had to take about a half inch off each end to fit and then each of the steel bar is 1 8 by 1 by 36 inches cut in half and then there's the one piece there which has a hole about half inch in and then 14 inches up and then the other bar has a hole half inch in and then 14 inches up then another hole an inch and a half later and another hole another inch and a half later and the same to be done on the second bar for the second side okay let's go install them okay let's start attaching the pieces we removed this piece and we're going to attach the new long piece so there's the bolt spacer and then the half inch head 5 16 bolt which I have a spacer in here nylock nut on the end now I can tighten all this up that's solid so this piece will go here now this one's going to go on with just a bolt and then a nylock nut and it's going to be secured on very tightly because it's going to remain in situ it's going to remain in place so that's going to stay in place there so now I'm going to put the angle bracket up the angle iron put the first hole in the third hole here with the nylock nut
And when I lower the shelf, I just loosen the wing nut or use a clevis pin and then the shelf will come down. So there you have it, I've made the brackets for both sides and now it's time to make the shelf. What you're seeing now is the actual wooden shelf that I had in the lower bracket mounted up above. You can see it doesn't encumber any of my view out the back window and it allows me to use the space up above the shelf. Let's take a closer look. There's a good look at the bracket on the passenger side. And then there's a look at the bracket on the driver's side. And you can see the shelf up above. So now, not only will I have this space for the shelf like I initially had, but now I can also access items that I've stored up above. So you can see, I can grab anything I want here, and then once I've loaded it up there, how about I secure the wooden shelf here on the lower bracket, and use a wire shelf at the top to see what that looks like. Let's have a look. Now I for one prefer this wire shelf, it just seemed to be too massive to have the wood shelf up here, but it's up to you, whatever you want. Now, if you did put something up here, I'd make sure to only put some light things up here. I wouldn't want to put like a high lift jack or um, something heavy up here, uh, at least not in this type of bracket. I think in a situation like this, I could see coming here and then putting a bunch of shoes or my rain gear, some clothes or towels, and then just quickly secure it up out of the way and it's not in your way down here when you're camping. The two smaller pieces that were removed from the initial bracket can be used here to hold the rack in place. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with this mod to the bracket that allows me to have this upper shelf area. I personally wouldn't put things that are too heavy up here. I'd put things like towels, extra clothes, maybe my rain gear. What kind of things do you think you could see putting up in a little attic space like this in your Jeep for when you're camping, for example? Please feel free to put them in the comments section below because they may make it into a subsequent episode. So thank you. Another tip that I'd reconsider is using a bolt with a flag nut. I think a clevis pin would be a much quicker solution. What do you think? Well, hopefully you found that interesting. Let's move on to our tips now. Now for some cheaper, cheaper tips. One tip I have in regards to this shelf bracket up here is that if you use the wire shelf like I plan to use, and if, you, and if the items that you use are going to get heavy, if you find that the shelf is sagging, then just get an old hockey stick, paint it white, and screw it to the edges here where the angle brackets are. And then instead of having the stick oriented this way, make the longer, make the wider part vertical, and then screw it in, and that will give you support in the middle of your shelf. I'm going to see if I need it or not, but at least you have that. So now, let's move on and hear what our subscribers have to say. 
And now for subscribers tips. This week's subscriber tip actually comes from the original Cargo Bracket video. Hey Jeeper Jeeper TV, nice idea. I'm going to try it out. The only thing I would do differently is I'm going to use plastic spacers from the box store and I'm going to add lock washers to prevent loosening and movement of the bracket at the frame. Signed, Saki Mike. Hey Saki Mike, thank you so much for the tip and those will work if you can't find nylock nuts. Either one of those ought to do the trick. So thanks for your comments, and if any of you have some suggestions that you'd like to make, please remember to leave them in the comments section below. Thank you very much. Hey, well that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. I really hope that you found that interesting. I just love this. And if you like this, please make sure to give the video a like. And if you're new to the channel, please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and the alert bell so you don't miss our next upcoming episode. Until the next time, I'm Dino for Cheaper Jeeper TV. Be well, stay safe, take care.